has made her appearance. Let's look at her kit, advancements, matrices, rotations, and see where physical stands after her debut. Umi is a unique character that doesn't work like conventional characters. She revolves around her skill, Magic Show, which provides various buffs and a large amount of damage. However, on top of having a cooldown, it requires the buildup of a preheat meter, which is increased on each hit of damage with a short cooldown. Background damage, such as that of Lin's Moonlight Realm, does not help generate charge, and will only charge when you're on the respective weapon. Furthermore, Physical hits generate twice as much charge as non-physical hits. With the strictly designed numbers on these preheat values, however, generating enough energy to cast her skill off cooldown requires the use of Lyra. But that isn't to say that you need Lyra to make Umi work. Inside of Magic Shell, you have Hyper Body and don't need to worry about getting knocked around. Additionally, a card is drawn every 2 seconds. Pressing the skill button again changes the next card that is drawn, and then every pair of cards triggers an effect based on the pair. Two spade cards deals high damage around your target. Two hearts applies a dot to up to seven targets around you while healing 10% HP. This deals slightly less damage than the double spades combo, but is useful for survival. Having one of each card applies a buff on you that increases your physical damage slightly, while giving you a temporary damage reduction effect. After the magic show wears off, the damage reduced will gradually be applied to you over the next 10 seconds. The magic show lasts for 18 seconds, giving you enough time to pick 4 pairs of cards. However, the buff effect isn't really strong enough to justify casting it, unless you're looking for the immediate damage reduction effect. When Magic Show ends, you gain 20 seconds of Hyper Body, and a big burst of 1000% damage is dealt if the full time elapses. Outside of her skill, Umi's DPS is nothing to write home about. All her attacks are essentially worthless, aside from her basic attack and dodges, which roughly match the damage dealt by Lyra's punching without Claudia matrices, or skill damage buff, and is slightly higher than Shiro's basic attack damage when not macroed. It's worth mentioning that Umi's auto attack chain is very heavily backloaded, having half its total damage coming from the final attack. Also, when you have something targeted, jumping right as the final hit goes off can quickly cancel the animation and let you start another chain right away, resulting in slightly higher DPS. Because her basic on-field damage is nothing special, all her value is tied to her magic shell, which is heavily reliant on team comp and advancements which we'll look into right now. When we talk about advancement value, we'll need to quickly go over some basic team comps that Umi will fit in. We'll look at the gain of Umi's advancements in the following three teams. Triple Physical Team with Umi, Lyra, and Claudia, Lin, Umi, Lyra, and Lin, Umi, Claudia. Umi's A1 grants 30 warm-up points when swapping to her weapon, with a 17 second cooldown. Additionally, the Magic Show cast deals an additional 840% damage at the start, reducing enemy physical resistance by 10% for 20 seconds. This physical resistance reduction is similar to that of Annabella. Because most mobs don't have resistance, and those that do don't have that much, this part of the trait is worth a minuscule amount. The extra damage on cast is nice, but the important part is the plus 30 charge on swap. This is what makes comps without Lyra viable and smooths out the rotation considerably. 
it's worth around the same amount in all three comps. Her A3 is what enables her as a support. When swapping out early, a number of things will happen. 1. A 200% dot will be applied to everything in a fairly large radius. 2. You'll gain a 25% physical damage buff that applies to everything except Umi herself. Note that this does apply to the dot effect. 3. The cooldown of the skill will be reduced by up to 13 seconds. And 4. You will gain 200 weapon energy if Magic Shell has 13 seconds or more left when you swap. Note that the values of all these effects scales with how much time is left in Magic Shell. So you have two options. Either DPS in Umi for the entire duration, or swap out within the first 5 seconds, long enough to get one pair of cards. Swapping out at the last second is discouraged, as the dot damage will be negligible and you lose the 1000% ending damage. Because of how considerable these buffs are, this advancement has huge value in increasing your team's damage, except in the case of the Lin and Claudia team, as none of those options are strong enough as a main DPS to take advantage of Umi's buffs. Her A5 automatically grants the Psychic Puppet buff inside Magic Shell that normally would cost a card pair to cast, and also increases the value of it to a 15% physical damage buff. It also provides some utility in HP restoration and charge. Because this only buffs the on-field magic shell buffs, this advancement is only beneficial for Umi as the main DPS, and has to compete with the high value of Umi's support. Her A6 grants each basic or dodge attack hit a flat 100% hit that counts as skill damage. This nearly doubles Umi's DPS during Magic Shell and grants a lot more value to using Umi as a main DPS over a support. Another interesting interaction to note is that, with Hologram Projector active, your Hologram's hits will deal the full amount of damage with the A6 effect. On this note, the Hologram also deals the full damage from cards as well. So there's really big value in getting huge bursts off with A6 and Hologram especially. The A6 is worth a good chunk of damage in each comp. However, these advancement comparisons are not including major seeds, which can shift the decision of going Umi DPS or Umi support. So let's start taking a look at those. Let's start out with Umi's matrices. Her two-piece matrix grants a 3 second final damage and physical damage buff when dealing physical damage, and works completely in the background. Her four-piece grants a large amount of final damage when you have two or more physical weapons equipped, which is also active in the background. This is where I'd normally present with you a graph of values of various matrices, but it's really comparing apples and oranges, so I'll explain through words instead. Umi's matrix is incredibly strong, roughly having the same strength as a Lin matrix, though only for physical teams. If you have Lyra invested in, Umi's 3 star should be prioritized first for the powerful support effects, and then Umi's 4 piece matrix over A6. If you don't have Lyra, then it's recommended to finish Umi A6 before picking up the matrices, as Umi's A6 is very powerful. In the Lin team, you will ideally have both Umi and Lin's matrices on the supporting weapons, and then main DPS matrices, such as Lyra's 4-piece or Samir Shiro on Umi. But what about Claudia matrices? There really is no place for Claudia matrices in any comp outside of triple physical right now. We're talking a lot about team comps, so it's about time we dig into them. Let's start out with a triple physical comp, consisting of Lyra, Umi, and Claudia. In this team, it's ideal to use Lyra as a main DPS, with Umi as support. Open with Claudia's skill right into Umi's magic shell. 
use basic attacks until the first pair of cards goes out, and then swap out to Lyra and use her skill followed by dodge into hold attack. Keep an eye on your Claudia Matrix buff if applicable, and right before it wears out, release your hold attack to become airborne, allowing you to benefit from Claudia 2 piece effect on Claudia's discharge, which you follow up with a skill. Switch back into Lyra and keep punching until you reach 70% energy, then activate another magic shell, rinse and repeat. What about Lin comps? Let's take a look at Lin and Lyra first. Open with Lin's Moonlight Realm, and quickly stack up her 2-piece matrix if applicable. I find that a basic attack into dodge attack is sufficient to reach 5 stacks. Switch into Umi and start DPSing with either basic attacks or dodge attacks. The damage potential of each is very similar, but you can cancel the end of a basic attack chain with a dodge for a little extra efficiency. When the magic show is over, switch into Lin, cancel the discharge immediately with a jump, put down a new field, and switch to Lyra before reaching full charge. Use Lyra's skill into dodge and hold attack. Punch until you're near the 70% mark, where you release the skill, discharge into Lin, cancel again, and then drop your field, and then switch to Umi for another magic shell, ideally before reaching full charge. The process repeats from here. The important part of this rotation is to make sure to place down Lin's field right before each magic shell, swapping before reaching full charge to prevent unnecessary downtime from discharges as they are a DPS loss in this comp. Finally, let's look at a comp without Lyra. The opener is similar to the previous. Use Moonlight Realm, stack up Lin's 2 piece if applicable, Claudia, and then Magic Shell on Umi and DPS as usual. Discharge into Claudia and use her skill, cancelling it immediately for a jump hold attack to build a little bit of charge while waiting for Umi's swapped back cooldown to end. Discharge back into Umi to proc her A1 for 30 energy, and then after one basic attack chain, put down a new Moonlight Realm on Lin, restack the matrix, and then DPS on Umi until reaching 70% charge. Then, hit Claudia's discharge and skill, and swap back to Umi for another magic shell. From here on, repeat this process. So, how do all these teams compare with each other, and pre-existing teams. Let's take a look in the next section. Disclaimer! Let me preface this section with saying that I have spent hours upon hours optimizing both rotations and calculations. However, the cactus parses I did are not 100% perfect and the calculations do differ slightly from the parses. According to the parses, all the comps except the Claudia Lin Umi comp are very close to the same value. However, as you're about to see, the calculations show a little bit of difference, probably due to lag or skill issue, and the fact that this is just theory versus a cactus test, both of which are just to get a rough idea of the power of a comp and should be taken with a grain of salt. Theoretically, Umi teams at max investment do come on top of pre-Umi teams, with the Claudia team being a good margin higher. Compared to other teams, this brings a whaled physical team up to the top. Notice the difference in Grievous window on the Umi vs Lyra comp. You don't hit Grievous as often in an Umi team, as Umi kills a good amount of charge by sitting on max bar. When looking at FTP teams, with all 0 star, unlimited matrices, and 1 star units, Umi offers an improvement from FTP Lyra teams. However, it still leaves FTP physical comps in a fairly weak place. In Dolphin comps, with 6 star units and no limited matrices, Umi improves the total power of physical comps by a good amount. However, in the Zero Whale, it looks like we're stuck in Tower of Frost. All 
going on? Umi is a fairly solid unit. Unlike some other options, she could perform multiple roles and has cemented herself in the physical meta. She's a concrete example of a unit that could be played for both support and DPS. While nothing is 100% set in stone, one thing's for sure. Especially if you don't already have an invested Lyra team, Umi will rock your physical team. <laughs>